guy that we love, stand behind him and guide and feed him. <laughs> Maybe just two of you click. One on each side. The rest of you fake it. Here comes Cap. Justicia. Lady Justice. The scales. Values. 
She always exercises her power with humility and grace and compassion. She's intelligent and creative, yet amazingly practical. She's well organized, something that's made her a superb administrator. And she's never lost her sense of humor about herself. Nor has she ever succumbed to the dreaded occupational, ha occupational hazard that she calls robitis. Actually, that's Elaine's coined term for being puffed up about yourself when you put on a black robe. <laughs> so let me share a few examples of how these traits have manifested themselves throughout her legal and judicial career in Alaska. I first came to appreciate Elaine when on April Fool's Day of 1977, she asked me to go ice fishing with her at Lake Louise. Now you know she's a persuasive advocate she get, to get me to go ice fishing, uh, particularly since a snowstorm was predicted. And we had been in her car for about an hour. She drove her sporty little low-slung blue Capri that she had uh, driven to Alaska, and we were in a whiteout. But Elaine kept driving. We had no sense. We had no space blankets. We had no provisions. She kept driving because she wanted to catch a burbot. A fish, she assured me, uh, was poor man's lobster. <laughs> Despite the fact that we couldn't see a thing, she kept chanting the mantra, stay in the tracks, stay in the tracks. <laughs> Always moving forward, determined to reach her goal, courageous in the face of adversity, all of these qualities revealed themselves during this trip. And she caught a burbot, and it really was very delicious, although I'm not sure I compare it to lobster. After my clerkship and her year on the council, we both ended up working for Brian Shortell at the Public Defender Agency, where we were assigned to do misdemeanor trials. And uh, Elaine's legendary uh, organizational and administrative skills first came to life when she would shuffle those files during a session of plea bargaining like a poker player with cards. And with her visor shading her eyes, she dealt those cases in a way that left the prosecutors scratching their heads. I'm sure some of them are here tonight at the end of a session with Elaine. And those are her persuasive powers at, at, uh, at, at use again. And soon the two of us were joined by two other misdemeanor attorneys, uh, Debbie Smith and Christine Schloys, and Elaine dubbed us the misdemeanors. <laughs> in fact, and this is an example of her creativity. She had the idea of a television pilot that she should write about gal pal attorneys living in an apartment, running to court, and uh, getting out of scrapes, in essence, a cross between Mary Tyler Moore and Ally McBeal. Yes, <laughs> that makes me Rhoda. <laughs> she never had time to write off this pilot, pilot, probably because she was running to court herself all the time. But although she's always had these qualities, uh, it's been in the past 21 years that she's been on the bench that they fully reveal themselves. She's approached her work with the Norman. courage and forthrightness as her trademark, never ducking a difficult case, never mincing words, never leaving you wondering where she stands on the issue. She's juggled a full family life with her work, balancing the demands of each with such grace and poise that she reminds us of a champion gymnast balanced on the balance beam. Her creative and practical approach always works, whether determining the best way to bring parties together during a settlement conference or the best way to cook her Thanksgiving turkey at the cabin in McCarthy, in McCarthy without a real stove. And her sense of humor is always at the fore, I'll never forget a regional gathering of women judges from the Northwest of my house some years ago, and one of the women judges from Washington designed her own judicial robes, and they had attached scarves and belts and bell sleeves, and she, uh, this Washington judge, claimed you could go directly from the bench to a cocktail party and not have to change your robe. <laughs> And all of the women judges from Oregon and Washington, and actually a woman judge from Hawaii were there, and this woman judge from Washington really wanted to have a fashion show to model her robes. And this really tickled Elaine, made her laugh, but she was game and she was willing to be the runway model. So to the runway music, Elaine swished off scarves and demonstrated the bell sleeves. And uh, this is really the only kind of robitis that Elaine Andrews has ever manifested. <laughs> So now to my toast. To Elaine Andrews, the best friend and the best judge I've ever known, Elaine 
Alatua Salute. 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 And now I'd like to introduce first Elaine's immediate family. She has a wonderful entourage with her tonight. And her sister hey, Norm, let me change son. places with you. Mm -hmm. privilege of introducing first her parents. I'd ask and this is my sister Nancy to the side and we are also known as the little kids and because the two of us are the little kids we always sort of refer to the big kids so without further ado I'd like to introduce my big kids sisters Peggy and um, Janet <laughs> Irish twin, and the reason I'm an Irish twin is because Elaine and I are only 11 months apart. <laughs> Thank you to my mother. So, um, what I'd like to do is just quickly introduce some very special friends and family that are here um, so that you can all um, see us. So, let's see, starting with this, this table right here, to introduce, of course, my wonderful children, um, Caitlin and Patrick, and my husband, Norman, who is over there. Would you mind standing up so we can see each other? <laughs> and next, and you have to always do this in order. So, um, Elaine's family's been introduced. So, Janet's husband, Dave, is over here. Video can stay in, Dave. <laughs> Georgetown University, so she's not here with us this evening. Some very special people who have traveled very far and wide. My father's sister, Virginia Romano, her son Dominic, and his wife Diana. They're here from New Jersey. was 
I was always one grade behind the one. <laughs> she received the A's, and I received the B's. The nuns always accepted me with enthusiasm until they came to the realization that the only thing that Elaine and I had in common was our last name. <laughs> How lucky I have been to follow so close behind such a great sister. She paved the way for me. As you know, she's a great negotiator. All of my brother-in-laws and my husband will attest to the fact that every Sunday, our time is spent checking, the sisters' time is spent checking in with each other. Um, and when any family issues arise that must be addressed to our dear father, <laughs> you can hear us in saying in unison, oh, just tell Elaine, she'll talk to dad. <laughs> she has a unique ability to calm even the roughest of seas. The one thing I'm really going to miss when Elaine, when Elaine retires, are my vacations to Alaska for the specific reason of sitting in her courtroom and watching her with such pride doing a job that only few can do so well. I salute you, Elaine, on a job well done. Say something. Well, every family has their sense of famous people in their in their family, and we have a very famous person in our family. Now, not everyone knows that Elaine does a perfect impression of Jackie Kennedy. <laughs> I thought, what can I say about my sister? And frankly, there are a lot of similarities between Jackie Kennedy and my sister. <laughs> First of all, of course, this is biased. You understand that I have my own feelings about her. But Elaine is a lot like Jackie Kennedy. First, I think she's truly beautiful. And I think that, that she is incredibly intelligent. And I'm sure many of you who practice with her would attest to that fact. I think that the joy of Elaine's intelligence and her gift of brilliance is that she's not boastful about it. She's quiet. She never um, shows off. She never pointed out to us when we were growing up with her that she was the A student and we were the B students. But <laughs> sometimes <laughs> um, Elaine is quiet with her intelligence. I think it's, it's one of her wonderful gifts. She's wildly successful, and I think Jackie Kennedy was wildly successful in the endeavors that she chose as being a um, editor. She was respected and honored and cherished by her colleagues. I think that that's safe to say that this crowd would feel the same way about her. She was a wonderful role model to her children, and um, my sister certainly has done that for her children. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> role model to her children. Having said that, her children will attest that Jackie Kennedy also pushed her children, taught her children, to be the most successful person that they could be, and I think that's true of my sister, that she gently and quietly and sensitively pushes her children to be the best person that they can be. She's fiercely protective and committed to her husband and to her children. I think it's a wonderful gift that she has. And above all, Elaine is a sensitive person. She is um, focused. She's directed. And for us as her family, we know that she's totally committed to us. And family first comes in her mind. And her career comes second. But clearly, she has been successful in both. So we salute you and we love you and we cherish your gift of family with us.
And then after Francesca Maria from Italy would just like to do a quick um, letter from Italy in Italian, which I will quickly translate. <laughs> <laughs> My mom has never been one of those peanut butter and jelly sandwich for lunch, chocolate chip cookies after school mom. She has also never been a mom Russ and I can win an argument with. <laughs> Years of legal training have made her adept at exercising her judicial authority in all conflicts that arise, overruling any objections that Russ and I may have. <laughs> Although Russ and I have had to make our own lunches for school and never won a single argument, we have spent something special the other kids did. She was the perfect role model, our mom was a judge. She was the perfect role model and taught us about independence and the importance of hard work. I can remember all too well the t-shirt I wore practically every day of my elementary school existence that said in big white letters, take the law into your own hands, hug a judge. <laughs> Telling people our mother was a judge always elicited oohs and ahs of admiration. On Take Your Kids to Work Day, I remember how my friends all wanted to come to the courthouse, and Russ and I never tired of forcing around in our courtroom and pretending we were the people we had seen there many times. The jury, lawyers, security guards, prisoners, and of course, our almighty mother in her giant black robe. And perhaps it is all these, all those unmade peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that are weighing on my mom's conscience that inspired her to retire. <laughs> Although there may be the occasional chocolate chip cookie waiting for us when we get home from school, I'm pretty sure she's not going to start letting us win the argument. <laughs> but just so she knows, Mom, you can forget about all those peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because we wouldn't trade you for a million chocolate chip moms and we are very proud of you. about two hours east and south of Naples. I refer to it as the Fresno of California. <laughs> it is a beautiful country because our family comes from there and Maria is one of our family. And she is beautiful. Carissima Elena, i sentimenti e le abitudini che costituiscono la felicità pubblica si formano nelle famiglie. La tua, nella vita e nel lavoro, è una grande famiglia. Continua a seminare il tuo sorriso perché splende intorno a te le tue energie per affrontare le battaglie della vita, il tuo coraggio per risollevare quello altrui. Semina instancabilmente la tua fede, il tuo amore, il grano della speranza e della saggezza. Semina e abbi fiducia. Ogni chicco arricchirà un piccolo angolo della terra. Mai l'uomo ha l'animo così sereno come quando ha svolto il proprio giusto lavoro. Congratulazioni, auguri affettuosi la tua famiglia italiana. A quick translation for that, uh, not purely accurate, but enough to get by. Um, Dear Elaine, it is with great sentiment that we feel for you on this special day. Your family life and your work life are all within one large family. Continue to spread your wonderful smile and energy as you continue in life. Plant without tiring the seed of your faith and wisdom because you will enrich your corner of the earth. How wonderful for you to know that you have accomplished what you set out to do. With great affection and congratulations, your Italian family.
kind of words. I was trying to figure out how to say everything I'd like to say to all the people who are here to whom I owe so much. Without it beginning to sound like an Academy Awards acceptance speech. <laughs> but I couldn't figure out how to do that, so here it goes. Um, I'd like to thank my producers. <laughs> that would be my mom and dad. They were the principal, of course, in what can only be described as a huge team effort. They gave me complete creative freedom on this life project. They said to all their daughters, you can be anything you want, so long as you end up being self-sufficient. <laughs> Self-sufficient they got times five. <laughs> and to my sisters, with a group like this, you can dispense with your therapist, fashion consultant, personal trainer, parenting consultant, and travel agent. <laughs> Who else would feel free to tell you to soften your edges on this one minute and the next minute come to your defense with ferocity? <laughs> they have been such a gift. And to my directors, all the Dubrock children, now, it may seem strange that the children are the directors, but I can tell you they teach you lessons you need to learn, especially as a judge. After a day of issuing orders in which people tend to obey, it's a leveling experience to come home, find that the orders you left for them for the day have been completely ignored. <laughs> the house is still a fright, um, and you cannot get the troopers to enforce a writ of household assistance. <laughs> I've learned and continue to learn about patience and flexibility and compromise and perseverance. My family has been my personal classroom on domestic relations, and I'm always the student. It's a joy to watch each of them choose their path and pursue their passions, and we are proud of each one of them. I must admit that there was less than an enthusiastic response from Russell, our 15-year-old. <laughs> At the news of my retirement, he claimed it simply wasn't fair that nobody else in the Dubrock family had to have me at home during our history. <laughs> I'll try and be scarce, Russ. <laughs> and a great thank you goes to all of the assistants on the set. To the major assistant on the home front, Donna Moore who really helped to raise Francesca and Russell and keep things going on the home front. No one has been blessed with such loyal and long-term childcare as I have had. Thank you, Donna. <laughs> to all of the assistants on the court set, my many talented law clerks over the years, please stand and take a bow. You're here, many of you. Up, up, up. <laughs> and your continued friendship over the years has been a major bonus in my life. I owe a great deal to my administrative assistants, Carol Chambers, my in-court secretary for 10 years in district court, and in superior court to Judy Kemplin, Lana Anthony, and Kathy McMenemy, my right-hand women. A very special thanks to Kathy for her incredible hard work um, as a secretary to a presiding judge. She has handled the enormous array of problems that come to our chambers on a daily basis. She has made me look better than I deserved. <laughs> if it weren't for her efforts and enthusiasm, this party would never have gotten up. <laughs> there are so many um, others to acknowledge. The entire administrative and trial court staff who assist judges in countless ways. The superb trial judges of this district who have shared their wisdom with me and helped make me a better judge. I am excited for the future of the courts under the leadership of Judge Dan Hensley. There is such talent and enthusiasm and dedication in this group, it makes it hard to leave. In every career, there are people who influence your performance. My high school teacher, Judy Johnson, is here. Judy? to life was an inspiration to me. My Aunt Mary, the matriarch of our family, has set an example of strength and good humor for the entire extended family.
her willingness to travel all this way, despite the fact that she hates to travel, <laughs> is an example of her dedication to family purpose. Judge Vic Carlson. Vic Carlson, you want to stand up for a minute? great unsung heroes of the court who set an example of hard work that has never been matched. He single-handedly did the domestic relations work that is now spread among eight judges. He introduced many of us, including myself, Judge Wolverton, and many lawyers who are here, to Alaska. He did it in a way that made us want, made us want to call it home. He was doing judicial outreach to rural Alaska before we had a name for it. And the late Justice Rabinowitz, my personal hero, who authorized the maternity leave I needed to keep me on the bench at a time when that decision was not popular. His encouragement over the years meant a lot. And finally, uh, an enormous thank you to my leading man, <laughs> my husband, Roger DeBrock. I made two smart decisions 21 years ago. Uh, first, to marry Roger, and second, to apply for judicial vacancy. <laughs> It's not an exaggeration to say I could not have done this without you, and more importantly, I wouldn't have wanted to do it without you. I am profoundly grateful for the amazing opportunities I have been given in this great state. I have loved my job from the very first day. I have never had a dull day, and my only regret is that I did not keep a journal of the daily notable moments. <laughs> However, it's a consuming job and there's no way to cut back, so I decided to leave it and to return to the court to help on a pro tem basis so that I can have my time for my immediate and extended family and other passions I'd like to pursue. I'd like to think of it as a transition rather than a retirement. I can't imagine leaving the courtroom forever. So much public trust is placed on a judge to sort out the problems of our society and to reach a just resolution. I have always worked hard to earn that trust. My decisions certainly have not always been right, but they have been the product of my best efforts and a desire to do justice. The Irish side of my family always seem to have the right saying for the right occasion. There is one that we have had to use so many times that we use a shorthand version of it, and we abbreviate it, and we simply say at the appropriate moment, moment to each other, CYB, count your blessings. Tonight I count my blessings. Ladies and gentlemen, we have no control over what's gonna happen next. It's a family tradition, and I've got a script that I probably won't apply Apollo, but I promise I won't goof it up too much, because if I do, I have five women including this one, one of which may happen to be my wife tonight. <laughs> I'll be in trouble. I think we're about ready. <laughs> Elaine, the court is now in session. <laughs> all rise, please. I said all rise. <laughs> Judge Joni and the dancing ladies are presiding. Please turn off all pagers and cell phones or you will lose your bedroom privileges for the rest of the evening.
sure are happy, we sure can cheer. The scales of justice will soon be here. You can run and you can hide. We know a lane will touch the sky. Wow!